Hello, Hambini fans, and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, we've got that special for you today. Someone launches a bike, and then we have to do a reaming. So I've decided to call today's Factor Man Continues His Epic Bullshit World Tour, starring the Factor One. Let's check the pen is working. The pen is, oh God, uh, working. I don't know what happened there. I think my hand slipped, right? <clears throat> By Hambini, aged five. Right, Rob Gitellis, Factor Man. If you don't know who he is, he is the man behind Factor. And you can see in this video that me and him have had a few little run-ins together. Um, and here's another picture straight from his Facebook profile. S seemingly, for some unknown reason, Facebook decided to recommend him as a friend to me. To give you a bit of background, he claims to understand mechanical tolerances from his degree in chemistry. You can watch that in this video here. He sold 52% of, of his of Factor to Forever Bikes, or the holding company that own it, I'm not really quite that sure, uh, in March 2025. Uh, according to the records that I looked up, they made $2.5 million in profit, which I would have thought they'd make a bit more than that, but there you go. Um, and they have the slackest manufacturing tolerances in the industry. Again, go and check that video out. And then finally, he refers to me as another effing foreigner. I will link, <laughs> which I find quite amusing given the where he lives. But anyway, the factor one, let's start off with this bike. So this was released, I think a few years, a few months ago, and then it's been on these great engineering publications that everyone reads called Cycling News. Uh, and this is the frame. It was declared as the fastest frame um, in the UCI bike in the world. There we go. I'm mean, looking through these features, right? There are a few features where I would say, yes, they do look aerodynamic. The first being the scalloped seat tube scalloped seat tube so that's quite a good thing you do want that uh, the other one is if you look at the distance between here which is the back of the head tube and here which is the effective front of the head tube um, i think technically that's part of the fork that is a long way so you're going to gain from there and then also since the uci rules were relaxed they've made the forks considerably deeper now there are a few other bits on here which I would say are a bit dicey. The biggest one is this gap through here, which they've had to do for them, and I'll demonstrate in the next slide. Uh, and then also here. So if you take a look at really, really fast bikes, you'll tend to find that that gap is quite small. Now they've probably done it to give you more tire clearance, but if it's an aero bike, surely a narrower tire would be faster, surely. But there you go. This is this is the bike industry, babe. Right, now, I would say if there's any gain, 90% of it is in the head tube and the bars. Now, I do test bikes, not so much bikes actually, wheels for a job. So, um, yeah, people do send wheels in to be tested. And the reason I said test wheels and generally not bike frames is wheels are all the same size. They're all designed to fit in the same geometry. When you get a bike, that goes out the window. So they might say this factor bike is 22% faster. Will a claim we will come on to in a minute. It's a bullshit claim. But anyway, um, as soon as you change the size of the bike, you might find these aerodynamics do not work in the next size up and you might find that matey boy's bike is faster because the geometry is slightly different but looking at this frame where's the fucking pen right i mean you notice the wide fork legs that does create a structural problem so if we were to take this bit and then draw it out so let's say that is my wheel okay the fork does that Yeah, whereas on a normalish bike, if we draw the wheel again, it tends to do that. Yeah, and then you've got your 
handlebars here and then the handlebars are on here as well um, that has to be reinforced quite considerably because you've lost the triangle um, if you take a, a triangle you cannot change its geometry by jiggling it because the geometry won't let you but if you take a square and then wiggle it it changes into a diamond because you can have multiple angles for the same length of sides but you can't in a uh, triangle uh, so that creates a structural different difference um, the other thing is on this bike and you can see it down here to gain this huge cord length of improper aerofoil um, they've put a hinged fork on the end of it so I'm just going to go back to this slide I'll raise the ink on the slide the axis of rotation is through there oops fuck is through there so the bearings are in here okay so because of that you've effectively got a twisting load that's acting on the bearings so you have to reinforce all this area here so it makes that bit of the bike heavier also puts a greater load on the bearings and this is exacerbated because it's actually quite a short it looks like quite a short head tube so the head tube is effectively only there to there yeah it's not the spacer on top um, so yeah they'll have to put some reinforcement there so there's weight loss or weight gain through there now the handlebars themselves handlebars is where I've seen personally quite a lot of improvement over the past four or five years um, this one is a bit of a dodgy one if you ask me because it doesn't give you much in terms of adjustment you're basically having to change the bars I thought it was a bit of a a dodgy thing when they went from stems and bars being separate to integrated because getting that fit correct is going to be problematic it's even more problematic on this thing because you've got a multitude of things that you can change so you can change this spacer underneath to jack it up you've also then got to change that which is the effective top cap that preloads your bearing uh, and then you've got the reach and also the stack height um, I don't know how they're going to do this because it doesn't actually give you that much um, much movement and the yeah look at that the head tube is quite short so the bending moment on there is quite big so again you have to reinforce it um, right <coughs> the white paper aka the shite paper let's have a look at this right end of the show fuck now so <laughs> this is this is the uh the shite paper from factor innovations and it's it's written like it's some sort of fucking top secret document written by a bunch of fucking chavs right <laughs> but here's the headline statistic it is 20 more than 22 percent faster than a specialized sl8 so if we do my rough numbers let's say i'm a fairly shite cyclist but i can do about 40 kilometers per hour for about a minute okay be, be, be a bit better than that now times 1.22 gives me something like 50 right <laughs> there is no way on this fucking planet where if i go from one bike to another am i going to go from 40 kph to 50 right it's just absolute bollocks i don't know how they're even allowed to put it oh actually i do they they've been so vague with everything so if you look at this chart so this compares the factor one with the uh what is it the ostro two so <laughs> it, it's it's just ridiculous there's no units up here it just says normalized yeah who gives a shit right and then all these well-known establishments guelph that's a place in canada sounds like tosser to me right sassy 
place in South Australia, I think. And then we come on to the CFD. Now CFD looks great until someone with half a brain cell looks at it. So if you look at all this CFD, okay, first of all, what the fuck is U-norm, right? I think that's your free stream velocity versus the localized velocity, but I'm not absolutely sure. Okay, now the first thing I looked at this is these spokes, right? Count them. Have a look to see how many spokes are on those wheels. There are loads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's loads of them, like 24 spokes, okay? And it actually doesn't matter because in their CFD, they do not appear to be rotating, okay? So they are fixed elements. The guy's leg or girl's leg also appears to be fixed. Now, modern CFD can't handle that in the static plane. So ANSYS, which is like the de facto CFD, it used to be called Fluent, um, can't really handle rotating objects that well. You need ANSYS CFX to be able to handle that. And then even then it's a bit dicey because you've got speeds that are different. So you've got the wheel going around at one speed and then you've got the guy's legs going around at a speed that's like 10 times less. So there's the first thing. Then there's more epic bullshit in here. Right, you can read all this crap, but it says the airflow stays attached for as long as possible, adding a net thrust at yaw. What, yawn? Fucking hell, right? So what that means is if you're going straight and the wind comes in from a slight angle, um, you are actually getting a net thrust. Again, that's something that I think is slightly dicey. But then we come on to the absolute nitty gritty, which is I think this test was rigged. So I've highlighted the special SL8 there. Look at the stack height on that. That is massive. Now, one of the problems is, right, it says here the drag is here but it says bike plus rider so what i think they've done is to get this 22 percent to make it vaguely believable is they jacked the guy up on the specialized to make him you know significantly worse because there's no other way it could really get that kind of number i don't believe the bike is going to make you 22 percent faster i just think it's epic bullshit i'm really looking for a way that they're going to get out of this okay so that's that bit um and then, oh my God, this is just painful. This is like Chinese level marketing. Oh, that's because it's a Chinese company. We've got one pilot feedback test pilot. So this guy called, I'm not even sure what his name is, but he's an Israeli premier tech rider, Jake Stewart. Holy shit, when it hits 50 kilometers per hour, it really starts to fly. <laughs> okay, All right, and then, observations from number two pascal ackerman no idea who he is uh, but he has got slightly dicey haircut um it feels like the bike is helping you not just cutting the air but cutting your hair pulling you through it so that's that lot is there anything else in here i've targeted oh god that just looks like a mercedes knockoff paint job um, right, so we get to this point here. Where's the fucking pen? I'm swearing I'm way too much here. 22% faster is an epic bullshit claim. I Just absolute bollocks. If anyone believes that, then they must have been born yesterday, right? Adds net thrust at your... Another slightly dicey comment. It's just... I don't know. I don't know who the engineer who designed this was, but... If he was in my guild, I'd have the fucker thrown out. Right, aero results look like they are frigged. First of all, there's no spoke rotation. And, um, well, you saw the business with the stack, ridiculous stack height on the specialised frame. I think that might be a way they're going to get round it, but there you go. And the numbers appear to be a total scam. Right, that is the end of this reaming. If you did enjoy it, remember to smash that like button. If you didn't, go screw yourself. And as always... 
keep banging that hairdresser. <laughs>